staff computing, but the public stuff was uh, farmed out to someone, and now they're, that's part of their um, part of their remit. Um, as part of this kind of upgrade, we we had to replace two aging printers. Those two printers have been received and have been set up and are now in place for both use by the public as well as staff. That one of them is in the across from the CERC desk, and the others in the workroom. Correct. Yep, they're the same printer. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they're good, durable machines. Um, um, did you say this? No, yeah. I just didn't hear. It. Are they available to the public if people are using computers? That can yes. So we one of them replaces the the existing um, public printer that's connected to both that, that's connected to all of the public computers. Mm -hmm. Um, but members of the public can use, there are a couple of methods to send emails from, or send print jobs from devices to that. Um, I'm hoping that one of the printers that we took out of use will be able to um, continue using that as a second printer that will be dedicated to just wireless jobs. Mm -hmm. So one will be for, you know, just the, the wired computers that are here and then one will be for, because it, it doesn't really work very well to go back and forth between those two things. Yes. Um, so we're going to try to have one that's dedicated for that purpose, but it needs some, um, it needed a new drum to, because it was printing weird. So hopefully that will be in place shortly if, it, if I can bring it back to life. Um, and then the only thing that really, uh, that I, oh, and I should mention that um, as a personal matter that uh, Audrey did give her formal um, resignation from the Y position. She is staying on as a Saturday um, staff person. So that allows us to advertise the YA position as just a Monday through Friday position, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is what we would prefer anyway, so that you know if that person is here during after school hours. There's no benefit to having a YA person on Saturday because there are no teenagers here. But that was just something that we had to do when we had less resources to deal with staffing. Um, and then the, the only thing that I uh, am looking for action from the trustees this month is on the proposal from Thayer Street, um, Thayer Street Studios for the reuse of the brackets that were on the Hooker School, if you all recall, we had the, you know, the heavy, um, I don't know if those are iron brackets that came off of the um, old building. Uh, and they have been reimagined. At, I don't know if you can see that for use on the other end of the building, under the the tall windows facing that way. Um, so it'd be like a little potting bench that could be used for outdoor programming. So putting you know, seeds and pots and messy stuff, crafts, activities, that kind of thing. So the proposal to uh, to build that bench and to install install it, um, you know, fix it to the wall, is one thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, I make a motion to um, spend the money, the $1,480, on the installation and the custom planting table. Second. Two questions. What is the source of funds going to be? And Um, is it also imagined to be used sort of like as a table if there is a program and there are snacks or beverages or something or any it could be used for any purpose the only purpose we don't want it used for is people sitting on it but aside from that um, it can be used for any purpose it's like it, it'll be made of durable weather you know weather resistant yeah no, wood. I the fancy wood yeah uh, as far as the source of funding, I would, I would, I would probably pay for this out of remaining construction funds, unless there's a compelling okay. reason to use the bag nope. for it. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Great. And that is more or less it. The um, community foundation balances keep bouncing back and forth, up and down, pretty dramatically. By you know tens of thousands of dollars from month to month. That's exciting to watch. They're back up <clears throat> relative to where they were last month. Um, donor wall, there's no update. Uh, there's no major update. I did finally touch base with uh, Dan, the uh, the guy that's fabricating that, that um, rec donor recognition wall. And he says he is working 
on it. He is kind of a one-man shop. He's in the middle of a renovation moving project or something like that. So he said he's, he's underway with it um, and that he would give me an update soon. So I will touch base with him you know, in the coming month and hopefully have more of a solid ETA for when that will be Where will installed. that be installed? Where? Where? <clears throat> in, on the wall outside of the small meeting room. In oh, the OK. Lobby. As you go in the doors on the left hand side. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about any other building mm -hmm. issues? Yeah, I didn't print out the agenda, but I assume is that a, is that an item? Oh, on just as library building, because okay. like we could do multiple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the updates from the last meeting on the building are that um, Lynn and I met with Carolyn Garyberg, the um, building maintenance person and Tommy and oh and Tom Quinlan the building and inspector Jen was there. and yeah Jen uh, from the select board office was there as well and so we discussed the um, the current situation with the the roof warranty being rejected um, and the state of the roof because in the meantime when we got the news that the that the warranty claim had been rejected I got back in touch with Phil and Mark and said well what are the possible solutions here um, based on what we understood that the roof was, you know, more or less okay to proceed. Um, it was disputed whether, you know, what the cause of any wear on the roof was and what we could do to, you know, remediate going forward that, that vulnerability. And so they gave us a, um, a couple of ideas and then we went to the meeting to discuss this further with uh, Carolyn and the others and we got some pushback. We got some kind of a sense that the, in their opinion, in their professional opinions, that the roof is um, is more of a problem than just the um, the areas of wear. They see, you know, plat wa moisture potentially infiltrating the under, you know, the under layers of uh, plywood and possibly making that wood bow. So they think that it's a bigger issue. Again, I'm just taking their word for it because I cannot can't see it with my own eyes, but that's what they say. Uh, and so uh, Carolyn said that at that point, we would, the town would probably need to seek guidance from town council to see how to proceed about this. And that's where we left it. I don't have any, do you, can you think of anything that I'm leaving out? No, those are <laughs> That's pretty much lights. it. So then that means they're thinking about legal action against- They're looking for legal or advice or to see if, um, if it would be advisable to try and recover funds, right? Uh, the, the difficulty here, and and Carolyn has, has sort of said this, but the, the difficulty here is that it's really hard to know where the fault lies, whether it's you know poor oversight, poor design, poor installation. You know, it, we don't we don't know, and everyone is going to say it's mm -hmm. that guy's yeah. fault. So yeah. um, it may be that it just makes more sense rather than trying unsuccessfully to go after a culprit that we just figure out what the solution is and then aim towards you know attaining that so we yeah. right so there she's in touch with um, the town council and, and we'll maybe know soon how they'd like to proceed but apparently it is more of an issue than just reinforcing the roof um, and I don't know I have to take their word for it but they know what they're talking about and so um, is it possible moving forward to change what is on the roof right now from like an asphalt to if anything's possible if, you know it, it's a matter of money right I mean it's it could be you know the question is does the whole is the whole thing faulty and it needs to be addressed or is it just that certain areas need to be reinforced I don't know um, it's just I, I don't know enough about it personally I just have to listen to what they tell us and then yeah. act accordingly. Yeah. Um, but the other issue that I tried to bring up going into this is that our lead there is there are clocks ticking on our mm -hmm. um, application lead. for, for yeah. lead, yeah. and we kind of need to figure this out sooner or later, um, sooner than later, mm -hmm. because it is it is not an just open ended thing that we can apply right. for this money. It's not an open ended thing that will receive the incentive grant from the, the MBLC for getting the certification. So. Um, 
So we're already pretty close to the line as far as the certificate certification goes, like as it yeah. goes by points. And from what I'm told by the person that deals with lead in Phil's office, we're kind of close to the line. So any points that we can get would be very helpful. Um, there are things that we could potentially do, but unfortunately most of them are not just simple, you know, wave a magic wand and get points. They're, you know, they're like putting solar on the roof. They are having the car charger installed outside, which is doable, but it's, you know, substantial amount of work that, um, and it, it probably, again, if we were thinking intelligently about this, we would probably be looking at it on a town-wide scale as part of like a larger plan, not just the library. I don't know if that's possible. Um, I don't know if it works on our time frame, but that's uh, something else that we could do. Uh, so yeah, so this is we're a little bit compromised by the circumstances as far as as far as lead goes. But I'm trying to keep up with it um, and get the things done that we can do, like getting our utilities. Um, our utilities are supposed to be reporting to Energy Star, which is the you know the national database for um, energy consumption and energy you know uh, conservation which has been challenging to do it's very complicated to get the thing set up so I'm, I'm working on that um, and then the other thing that came up with the building is that while I was away on vacation Lynn sent me a photograph of the sidewalk there's there are some portions of the sidewalk where the top layer is kind of disintegrating Crumbling. it's like really in bad shape um so i i sent that over to the dpw folks and said can we you know meet and look and figure out what to do about this and what the problem is because they do they are putting down a lot of um chemical salt stuff I on the, on, whatever form yeah and so I did. I also did touch base with um, Haley at the Council on Aging just to see, like, are you having problems on your side of the site with this? Because th it wasn't the same contractor that did the sidewalks on both sides. So it seemed like if they were having problems over there, then it seems like something other than defective concrete or workmanship. They have had some issues over there, but not to the same it's, extent that we have. It's minor. Right. It's now, is this a just, new instance of this? Because I, I know that there have been, we've had issues. We did. We had a little bit, and I think. I, if I recall, I thought that it was corrected. Or yeah, see, well, I, the way I remember it, and I could be wrong about this, is that when we had the initial instance of this, that it may have been still under warranty. Okay. Do you? Is that how you recall it? That I don't know about, but it after having registered some scaling or blistering, take your pick, of formal cement term, they decided to do that sealant application that's right and they did that labor day weekend mm -hmm. was that I over recall. the entire right okay. that was so that was both sides yeah. their coa right. um huh. i where the scaling is taking place and it's mostly from just beyond the restrooms toward the back and around um, it's not prevalent mm -hmm. there it's not out along the street mm -hmm. um, which could be indicative of the fact that they don't salt that as heavily as they salt the sidewalks coming up to the door well don't know it's hard to say I will point out that the senior center looked like a beach of salt mm -hmm. it was Kind of alarming, actually. Um, but it's it is one area. It is not all of it. And so Patrick is working on trying to figure out when the concrete was actually put down, and if the appropriate tests were done, and so on and so forth. And that's. That meeting was just this afternoon, and that's still sort of yeah. So we did in meet, process. we met with Carolyn and the DPW folks and looked at it. Um, you know, they gave us their impression of what was going on with it. They it seemed to think it was you know the work was not properly done. There was something wrong with either the conditions when this the cement that was not a favorable was cured, yeah. time when it was put down, or something was not put in the concrete that should have been. 
so following that, I wrote to Phil and to Mark and you know explained the situation, sent them the pictures, and asked the questions raised by Gary and um, Scott and Scott from DPW about what had been in the formulation of the concrete and what had not been, because they were saying it should have been that there was you know anti. Um, I actually had to call Scott and ask him what he like, cost like. Uh, I, don't I can't remember the term that he used, but yeah. um, but something that would that would not allow caustic substances to you know Penetrate. to harm the yeah. harm the mm -hmm. concrete, and also was the concrete surface sealed? <clears throat> so I asked for that, and I asked for you know were all of the tests that needed to be done followed? Were there any irregularities in the test results that were that were done at the time that the concrete was put down? Um, and so um, Phil. I'm trying to remember if he actually sent me the test results or he was going to look into that. I, I don't remember, but he they he did reply. Both Mark and Phil replied immediately, um, which was very helpful. And they said that from what they saw, they both agreed that, it, to their mind, it was salt damage. Um, they did say, for whatever reason, that they did not, in the specification, recommend using the things that Scott and Gary had called for. Now, I don't know why there's that discrepancy, why in their professional judgment it's not what the DPW guys think, but um, it's not really clear what it should have been. I don't know who to believe on that. So, so again, we're, we're working through that. Don't they use like a sand and salt mixture? No That's sand. There's no sand mixed salt. in it. They used to use a lot more sand. I don't know why they've switched, but now they just use that you know, big rock salt kind of stuff, and it, it's just, um, you know, it's everywhere. There's just a lot of it. So they, it, it looks like, you know, and we asked the question, is this something that we need to address immediately? Is there an issue? Is there a safety issue? Are people going to start tripping on it? What are we obligated to do? Uh, and they didn't think that this was something that we needed to address like right away, it can wait. It doesn't look good, but it's not a, a you know, it's not. A, it's not a safety, health and safety issue. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So we can leave it for now and sort of figure out what can be done. But they seem to think that, you know, at the time when we do try to address it, that it probably makes sense to like break it up and just report yeah, from probably. scratch. Yeah. So it's. But that would probably be the spring. Well, it, it may not even be necessarily this year, but yeah, it would be when yeah. it's favorable to pour concrete. So yeah. it wouldn't be winter, it would be yeah. probably sometime in the summer. Um, Carolyn yeah. said that just being alerted to the fact that this may need to be considered in the course of the townwide budget, that there will not be an opportunity to do it in FY24. So we are looking probably beyond that. And neither Scott nor Gary suggested that this was in any way something that needs to be addressed immediately. Do we need to put a sign? Again, it's, it's, not, not, it's, not, it's not causing a hazard. I mean, if it was causing a hazard that required a sign, then we probably would need to do something yeah. about it. But right now, it's just a, you know, kind of patchy. Like flaking. Yeah, right. And so it, it needs to be sweeped off for sure, but it, it doesn't, it's not going to make you trip. Oh. So, One of the yeah. things that I think Gary pointed out is that where some of this blistering has taken place, you can see beneath it there's a fairly large chunk of stone. So his theory, which kind of actually made a fair amount of sense to my way of thinking, was that they didn't allow the aggregate to settle enough so that, I mean, this is like chocolate chips in the scones or whatever. Are they evenly distributed? Are they at the bottom? The big stones are supposed to be at the bottom and the finer stuff at the top. and. If you have something hard at the top and just a very, very thin bit of concrete on top, it's easy to understand how that would yeah. become dislodged. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was actually fairly disheartening to hear, but. <laughs> 
and I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else building related for now. <laughs> That's pretty big. <laughs> well, I, yeah, the thought has occurred yeah, to me that the library purpose. director is spending more time being a facilities manager than yeah. a library director, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> problematic. Okay. Do the friends have anything to say? The meeting tomorrow night. Um, our time is always. There wasn't any meeting last month, so they're meeting tomorrow night. Enough. Would okay. you do me a favor then, yeah. if? there is anything that would be useful for the rest of us to know about just send us a quick email sure. rather yeah. than yeah wait yeah okay thank you um i actually only have one other thing that i sort of kind of previewed mm -hmm. and i did come over on saturday when this very large event okay. occurred <coughs> and it's like an anti-vaxxing talk, wasn't it? There were two guest speakers from the a group event. that is not in favor of vaccines. And folks were behaved and there was there were there were no incidents, but it was very well attended and simply in this space? Yes. There were like a hundred people in this room? More yes. than a hundred, which was problematic because as I mentioned all of the parking places yeah. except for handicapped were full mm -hmm. and there were patrons who were not able to find a parking place mm -hmm. and Patrick and talking to staff and having other conversations it is clear that it would behoove us to take a closer look at the policy and particularly how that relates to what the capacity is. Yes. Um, there's several people have questions about the placard wherever it is it's that says. It's on the left. Or, yeah, on the left when you go out. It says 250. It's basically the capacity for this room is 250, which is you could right exactly if you if you essentially if you stuck a person I actually Luna came in here today and and bless her heart paced off the counted off the squares in the room yeah. did the math uh, and it's like two hundred so you could fit one person in the, if that to get two hundred fifty it would have to be more than one person one person and a fraction in each one, of these yeah, squares so, so people could stand on other they could do that too right yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just can't even imagine a hundred people in here, let alone. That's the max. More we've than had, that, right? you know, we've yeah. had a couple events of events yeah. now where it's been around that, and you know, um, it, it, this raised a lot of questions. Uh, one of which, I mean, the, the first consideration here is that when you have any event, so the the, organi the organizers of the event kept coming in and sort of like pointing to the sign and saying, "Well, the capacity is two hundred and fifty, right?" And we were like, "No." I mean, no matter what that sign says, by policy, the room is only yeah. able to be used by 100 people at a time. Especially if there's chairs. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's the kicker, because you can't, yeah. you could say, oh yeah, you could f cram 250 people in here, but they are having a four-hour event or three-hour event. There's no way that three people are, are, that for three hours people are going to stand. So of necessity, you have to have chairs. And once chairs are involved, they have to be laid out in an orderly fashion so people can go in and out mm -hmm. of the room. And you cannot get more than there's. This is what did you just count up? Ninety eight chairs or something like that. Well, including the wood ones. Oh, including the wood. Well, so whatever it is, like that. This is all the chairs, and if you lay them all out, there's no room for. I mean, you can have people standing, but they're blocking aisles, so it's really not. Um, so you a would good suggest thing. in the future maybe having people to enforce that. We now that we know what a what a hundred plus person meeting looks like, we need to kind of um, maybe review the meeting room policy and figure out what is a realistic number and also think about other considerations like what does it mean when you have a hundred person meeting uh, for other library users? What does it mean for users of the Council on Aging or other neighboring departments? Mm -hmm because there's an impact on those departments. So yeah. if, if we may need to look at the hours that this room can be occupied at maximum mm -hmm. capacity, whatever that number is. Right. 
I had proposed to Lynn that we just have a little working group to think through some of these things. Uh, and one thing that I would suggest that we do is set up this room with all of the chairs and figure out what it look, you know, how it can be laid out mm -hmm. and figure out what the, the actual number should be. Because 100 was a number that was thrown out by Phil um, as to what he thought would work with seating. Doesn't the fire department need to weigh in on this? Like, well, I, need to, I have to talk with them as well because again, the number that's on the on the room that says 250 is in, to my mind, in contradiction with the building permit, which yeah. the total occupancy for the whole the whole building is 300 and I think 17. 17. <laughs> this is like a little. <laughs> this is <laughs> a, <laughs> a, 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 maybe the yeah. 250 is for the whole building. That's not no, the that's permit three seventeen. The, the sign on that says occupancy for is for this room. Oh. So it's not helpful to have a sign that says that because people look at it and they just take it for granted that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, people that maybe don't have any sort of spatial sense, you know, could look at this room and go, "Well, it says two fifty, so well, we're gonna we're gonna plan our right. our event okay. to have yeah. two fifty. And, and especially and given it at the time, they're gonna want as many people in here right. as possible. Right. And that's not in our best interest to have yeah. people jamming bodies in here for all kinds of reasons. The other thing that we need to take into account is that every meeting is unique. Um, and so if people come in and say, so in, for instance, in this meeting, they had, a, you know, they had a table out in the hall, which I think we said that they could do, because again, I, I don't, we were worried about people coming in, but the, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't unreasonable to allow them to have a table with literature on it. We've done that for many other meetings and groups. But the practical consideration is that if you once you start deploying tables in the space, that eats up even more space for chairs and occupants. So we kind of need to think about what it means to have a table in use, two tables, six tables in use, and then how that reduces the overall occupancy um, and make sure that people adhere to these And you numbers. also have concrete. Co people congregating out there too. Right, and that caused a problem because people were just milling around in the lobby, apparently after or during, and so people that were here to just do their normal business were kind of like, and, and you know, people that didn't really want to walk through crowds of unmasked people, which is not really a problem that we don't have, there's no policy on masking in the building, so it's kind of like, um, there's not really much we can do about that, but egress is a concern, so if you have a bunch of people just milling around you know, it needs to be clear to the organizers that they need to keep spaces free and not just let it spill over into other areas. Um, there are also is issues to consider about the length of time something is booked. Mm -hmm. If there are recurring events, mm -hmm. um, and certainly if there, I believe there were at least cookies or beverages involved with this about custodial support even if just in making sure the restrooms are clean and there are I mean between things that Patrick thought up things that staff members pointed out what I observed the conversation I had with Audris and Ella when I was here it's not a real straightforward thing yeah. and it sounds to me as though what we need is sort of kind of a sliding scale and if it is going to involve custodial or other supervisory support um, as someone pointed out if the rec department holds something at the elementary school they have to pay for a custodian to be on duty so, excuse me, there are a lot of facets to this, yeah. and if there is anyone who is particularly interested, I would be happy to have them play a role in putting something together and working with Patrick and the staff, and if not, then I will. I think it's probably a couple hours of just kind of thinking through scenarios and different you know, situations and just re reviewing the document, maybe going through and reviewing some other uh, library meeting room policies again, um, which is what we did when we put the first one together. But mm -hmm. um, but now that we have more experience with it, I think you know other things will jump out of other policies that may be helpful to us. 
uh, and then you know make a recommendation and bring it back to the full board for for uh, for an updated adoption. policy. Is it only regarding this room, or is it the other bookable room as well? Do it probably should be similar policies or completely the, separate. The, the the both rooms are are at least the two rooms that are. Um, bookable and theoretically available for after hours use when the building is all set up for that, those fall under the policy. Other rooms do not because they're more, you know, they're part of the library. They're part of the library and it's kind of sometimes it can be used as like overflow or whatever if it's appropriate, but that's kind of like more down to our discretion and they're not really reservable rooms unless we decide to put something in there. So it's mostly these two. I'd and, be and maybe that Thank you. Then I will leave that to you and Patrick to figure out when it's convenient to work on that. Because that's something that needs to happen soon. Well, like the update of the policy. You know, you're right. So, in order to update the policy, it would have to be read twice before it could be approved yeah. and go into effect. Yeah. Um, um, so, that means a couple of months. And is this particular group, do they meet more? Is this a common meeting place for them? So it's, I don't really know, well, it's unclear to me um, who this group is and who the organizer are, organizers are. There was a group that I believe came and used the room for purposes that they said was something about like sort of a legislative get together. Mm -hmm. I thought they, I thought the people that came, so about a month ago this happened before, um, you know, there was a group that got together before the holidays, and they came in and they described the meeting as something like meeting with legis legislators. Um, and again, I didn't really think anything of it. I don't really know what the content of the meeting was, and to be honest, I don't really care. It was just more a matter of you know facilitating yeah. the meeting, making sure that the AV stuff worked for them, mm -hmm. and then I got out of here. And so later in the month, um, someone I think that was affiliated with that meeting called back and reserved the room. I think they spoke with another staff member to take the reservation. Subsequently, they called back, and I spoke to them. And the person was talking to me. This was weeks had gone by, and the person was talking to me like as though they I would know who they were, and I didn't. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I just took the reservation. I double checked the reservation. Yep, you're on the book. Um, and they they were asking very sort of intensive questions about the occupancy of the room, and I explained that the policy, as it stands, is a hundred people, and I explained about the chairs and, and and what have you. And they were like, okay, all right. So they seemed to be fine. Um, and then in the meantime, we found out, and, and it was, I guess the warning bells were going off because they were saying that they had, they were basically um, had a waiting list and that, you know, they, they expected the room to be at capacity. So I was like, okay. And then we kind of looked into it more and then we realized that the, the content of the meeting was going to be controversial, which again is fine. However, we were concerned about having many, many people here. Um, a controversial subject, people getting into arguments or whatever, um, counter protesting, what, what mm -hmm. have you. And so, you know, I, I did alert the, because um, it was happening on a Saturday, I alerted the, uh, the police department just so that they would know that there might be something happening here. And at the very least, if they drove by, they'd know why there were 100 cars in the parking lot. Um, and so thankfully nothing happened, but I wanted the staff to feel reassured that if like all hell was breaking loose, that if they picked up the phone, somebody was gonna come over here and, and take it upon themselves to deal with it because it's not the staff's problem to deal yeah. with yeah. Um, something like that. And so we got through it, Lynn was here, um, saw it with her own eyes that it was, uh, you know, way more you know, packed in here than it, than it should be. Um, and so my plan, go, and so in answer to your question, that group wants to come back and use the room for other purposes. Now, I don't know if they're all thematically consistent with what they were doing. If they're, I, I just don't know enough about the organization to know what they want to do. And again, I don't really care as long right. as it's consistent with the policy. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't have contact information beyond just starting to reach out to random emails that I find on websites to try to find the organizers. So my plan is to wait for them to call back with other questions or other They are on the schedule for the first Saturday. Exactly. February. So they, they, they but have I a think reservation. that is a local group. I believe the meeting that was here last Saturday was a regional group it with was two guests. Right. It was speakers. coordinated by the local group right. that was affiliated. But it was yeah. drawing from a wider area than might typically be the case. 
Right. But that doesn't change the capacity right. of the room. Right. My only concern is that going forward that I get the message to these folks that the mm -hmm. meeting that they held here was not in compliance with the policy as it's written. And so that, again, that's raised questions about how we handle reservations with, with groups that we're not familiar with, where we don't know you know, because there are groups that come in here like all the time, and it's we're not going to go through a bunch of paperwork with people that come in, and we know that there's like oh, there's six and eight people, or it's a writing group, and they have like ten people max. Um, they're just going to make the reservation. We there's no problem. But when there's an issue where it's like well, we're you know just an unfamiliar entity, and we don't know how to get in touch, uh, we want to make sure that they understand the policy that they're you know that they're agreeing to the policy. Um, we're probably going to have to start doing a little more paperwork on, on that end. And that's in the policy. We just haven't really been doing that because we haven't needed to. The, the meetings have been small, by and large. Well, this what, one of the things I'm wondering about, it, like whether this is in the policy already or, or how explicit it is, <coughs> just about, I'm just imagining like if, if, if there's a table with literature, I'm wondering like how much of that is misinformation and whether that is actually counter to the policy or whether there was whether there was disturbance of, I mean, it sounds like there was like, people physically were having a hard time getting through just the crowd. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything in the policy about like leaving, <laughs> leaving patrons alone or disturbing well, they were, they were them. Soliciting, they weren't no, no, not, not if they were doing it, but if there's yeah. anything in the policy that explicitly describes like needing to kind of keep your event Within the confines of the room, way of, 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 of normal yeah, library that, use. Yeah, I, I don't know if yeah. there's specific language to that, but definitely we need to insert it if it isn't there, just to yeah. make sure that it, this is not that anything happening in here is not disruptive to the normal use of the library by library patrons. So right. that's what I was sure. wondering if they're going to have uh, display mm -hmm. tables yeah. that they have to be fitted into the, the meeting room. room and not and just stop everyone from using the lobby area for a meeting display table. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah, I guess the things that come to my mind that we that we would then need to address it, that means like we would then tell the friends, the friends cannot sell popcorn, or do we, again, is this by, dis, by discretion to well, on a case by case basis? friends are friends of the library, where mm -hmm. this is a sure. public meeting but, room. But they probably, uh, people wouldn't necessarily know that. I mean, because do, do the friends advertise or have like a sign that says? Yeah, they do. They, they probably don't. The friends. No, they do. That what? That does what? That says it's they're they're the friends of the library. I, I guess I'm what I'm wary of, and I am always wary of this is having double standards that someone points out and says, "But you let so and so do this." And they would definitely probably not case of the place, but you know, find out if other groups are. But you know, in that instance, unless I'm mistaken, it's not that the friends have reserved the meeting room and are extending mm -hmm. into the public spaces. The friends are using the public space for reasons to benefit the library. And I, I see a distinction there. Yeah, see I that too. Patrick, yeah. would you please distribute the meeting room policy to yeah. everyone just to make sure? So that, you know, the rest of us can take a look at it and if we have... I think it's easy to assume that something that's happening in the entryway to the library is condoned by the library yes, or affiliated with the library. Yeah. There is something that's like sort of within a separate room, I would assume like, oh, like, you know, anything can happen in there. And so, I, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I'm just wondering, like, I don't know how to thread that needle, but it seems that... You know, the friends, it does have a particular relationship. The friends are, to the yeah, library. the friends are a bad That's, example. They're yeah, not a good yeah, example. But, uh, right. <laughs> it seems like it deals with the, con the confines. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we need to. The, the question room. is really is about, um, I mean, it's not just about this, but like when you put stuff in the hall, are you blocking egress to have a bunch of people clogging up the hall, standing mm -hmm. there? I mean, again, most of the time when this has happened in the past, it's just been with much smaller meetings. Yeah. It, it is natural to, in some instances, from an event perspective to have like a table out there so that people can like conduct whatever conversation in business. Oh, you want to buy the book? Use mm -hmm. the book and not have it going on mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I understand why that might be beneficial, but it may, again, by 
making too many exceptions or having an exception here but not there, it, it can get messy. So we may just want to say you can't set up yeah. you can't set up camp out in the hall. Yeah. So I mean, I maybe the main group that I could see running into this um, might be like Girl Scouts selling cookies. Like right. um, but I mean, I think if we're going to have a policy, then there's going to be a policy, and mm -hmm. they're just going to have to reserve the room and have maybe a sign outside this mm -hmm. door saying, come in and buy Girl Scout cookies. Sure. Yeah. I'm wondering about signage. Like, maybe there's a way that the library can provide, like, kind of a standard sign that you can use so that your people know to turn left at the door, um, but or that everything that actually happens within, there. yeah. yeah. But if there is sort of a, you know, sort of empty sign that someone can put their little did, notice Did in. you feel on Saturday that they needed some sort of guidance? Or, you know, like, in terms of, you know, not spilling over into the, the library itself? You know, kind of like hurting, hurting. <laughs> well... <laughs> Part of the problem was the one woman who approached the desk to ask if there were more chairs. I said to her, how many people do you have? And she said, well, about 120. And after we had that conversation, I saw a number more people come in. There were people standing at the back. There were people standing out there trying to get in. I don't know. There may well have been, but I don't know if there were people standing in that hallway there listening mm -hmm. because they were unable to get into the room. And so the content of this meeting is really irrelevant. It was it was the size yeah. of the gathering mm -hmm. yeah. that was a problem. Yeah. Well, and that the organizers were not trying to to deal with you, you know I mean organizers have an event and more people come than than yeah. they're allowed to have, then it's the organizer's responsibility to turn people away. Well, she said she was going to do that, but then she didn't. Yeah. Right. And yeah. there was there was also, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to very generously um, take it as a given that they were telling us the truth, but they, they there was some conversation or comments made that there was confusion on the part of the, of the organizers of the event because of the signage okay. outside yeah. on, on the wall. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, I didn't talk to every organizer. Maybe there were more than one, and and different people had a different idea about that. Um, but again, that's where the where the policy form comes into play. And it's like you have read and understand the policy and understand that it's a hundred and not two fifty. In the meantime, we're, we are going to like review why that two fifty exists and whether that signage is required or if it can be removed or altered uh, to reflect reality. And I think to say also in that document that. Um, the library um, can provide 94 chairs, um, and that is all that are mm -hmm. available. Um, you know, we right. just don't have any more chairs. That's it. So now, before you go into this, that that's all the seating. That's available. yeah. But, but even still, you run into comes. the problem of people standing yeah. around the edge, and you run into the problem. And you know what occurred to me as when I came, I was parked down three parking places up from the senior center, and I said, "What if the senior center were open? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. we're having their own event." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, during construction, yeah. we you know in the planning for this, we always have those conversations with right. the, the council on aging about like, well, what if, what if, uh, and it was always we always agreed that with good communication, we would avoid those kinds of situations. And thankfully, this was a Saturday. Um, I never even, it never, it never even occurred to me to contact Haley. I mean, mm -hmm. I thankfully they were closed, but it just never dawned on me that yeah. I should probably like think about that. Um, but yeah, any other well, day how or week. How are you to know? Well, like there could be an event that they think is gonna be 25 <clears throat> people ends up being 100, and you don't know that in advance to coordinate that with the Council on Aging, so. That's also a thing, yeah, yeah. definitely. Right. But you, I mean, your... you, yeah. Sometimes you just have an inkling, and I think yeah. the form should reflect um, 
you know, someone's best guess estimate as to how many people they expect to attend such a gathering. If they're expecting, like, yeah, this, we're really hoping that it's going to be at capacity, then capacity is whatever we set it up. And they should tell us that and not, you know, say 30. Why would they say 30 if they think it's going to be 80? But, um, but that, that should be on the form that they give us the best guess. Well, I think, you know, <coughs> once we are able to do an online request yeah. for a reservation, you know, there will be fields for who is the primary contact, how do we get a hold of them, this, that, and the other thing. You check the little box here. It means that you have read this policy, understood it, will abide by it, and failure to do so may jeopardize future reservations. Mm -hmm. But so, if we're going to say that the room capacity is 100 people, then do we really need to ask you how many you're expecting? Because we're telling you up front you can't exceed this. I don't care. Well, because you know, again, right? But again, a hundred, a hundred person meeting, just the practical ramifications of that is a hundred. We don't. There's not a hundred parking spaces on this mm -hmm. site, so we need. We kind of need. So to then maybe that. we need to bump it down. That's yeah. A reason, yeah right. That's a factor that yeah. we need to consider. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So then, if whatever that number is, yeah. I mean, if we're saying you cannot have more than X number, right. then do we really need to ask them how many? They expect because they're already agreeing that it's not going to right. But it's that. again, it's still important to know if that group had come in here and said we want to meet, um, and they had said we don't really expect more than fifteen people because this is like an organizing meeting or whatever. That would be a very different consideration than the meeting that happened, mm -hmm. even though it was a violation. But even if they had stuck to it and they had only put a hundred people in this room, that's still a, something that we would like to know ahead of time yeah. because if they do this on a Wednesday when the Council on Aging is open, I don't want to have to guess and be like, well, I didn't ask, you know, because they're going to be mad. Mm -hmm. So we okay. should we should at least try to get a heads up. Yeah. We can't control situations, and sometimes the organizers can't control situations or have a crystal ball. But if we get a sense that something's going to be a big deal, we should be as prepared as possible. I just think there's no harm in asking the question. Um, and there may be, you know, it. it it may be, like you alluded to earlier, like maybe at a certain capacity, there are additional fees in terms of custodial services. Right. Um, and, you know, so it may, it, it may be that there's a certain, there's like two tiers, right? Like there's like the maximum capacity tier, which to says, that, which, to what, yeah, yeah to which, maximum. which just has an impact fee, basically. Um, I don't know. Yeah, this is all. Yeah. Us, <laughs> that becomes reading. another thing to monitor. <laughs> but uh, so that's what I was going to bring up. Is it well, possible that maybe like a trustee should be here to help monitor it, rather than that becomes like pretty the, that becomes pretty onerous. I mean, it, it, it maybe that, first. That's a lot of stress to put on the the your staff. Yes, but again, that should come into that should be in consideration just, as we just. Dis it, as we discuss the maximum capacity for this room because we have to like consider the wear and tear on people that work here as well um, yeah. and but we you know and it's it is part of our mission Carolyn when we were just kind of talking informally outside was saying that she really hates to see us becoming like a banquet coordinator which you know I get that again if we want to restrict further like what you can do in here as far as like serving food and that kind of thing you know we could do that I, I just think that the room is part of one of the selling points for how we got this building built and the community community deserves to use it in different ways as long as they're acceptable don't do damage don't cause disruption um, and, it, and if sorry go ahead. and i just don't want to i i personally do not want to police things to death mm -hmm. so that it's like you will are in asking 20 questions about every event i just want to make sure that they're consistent with the policy yeah. and if you want to have little timmy's birthday party here on saturday <laughs> You know, knock yourselves out. Just make sure it's cleaned up and everything else, and it follows the policy, and no open flames. Because if you think about it, th this is probably the only space that's a community space in Hadley. Senior center too. It's not. That's not as available. Oh, it's, that's okay, a, yeah. a little bit more really? locked down. And, it, and it's specific to seniors. Okay. Well, yes, but you've got public meetings in there mm -hmm. now as well. But. Mm -hmm. Public health is in there, and select beings are regularly in there. Yeah, but I, I think that's because it's a formal meeting. 
It's not like Timmy's birthday party can be. No, that, right. that's true. Right. That's a town building, yes. and town business can happen in any town building. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. you know. Um, but their, their building was not sold in that way. It was not sold to right. the public. Yeah. Yes. It's going to have a multi-purpose yeah. meeting room that you will be able to reserve for your right. meeting or your event. Um, well, and you would be having those meeting here if we had the, the correct... Yeah. Uh, correct. Yeah, and that's another thing we need to take into consideration. We've gotten used to the way things are that, that um, these meetings take place during our normal staffed open hours. but. We need to think about what happens when there's access to the building. Do we really want a hundred people attended meetings happening here at eight o'clock at night? Um, when and then, like the staff that come in in the morning to find whatever right. gets left behind. Right, exactly. Right. exactly. There are a lot of considerations, a lot of things that we need to think yeah. about that are not just for now, but how it works in the future. There may be, you know, again, limitations based on the time of day, what kind of meeting it is. And, you know, so it's, it's probably not going to be simple. No. Probably not. And you probably get a little bit of pushback. On what? From whom? The change in policy. From who, though? Well, I mean, if if the people that came here last Saturday come here again. Well, they, they, I don't, they I'm not can concerned about, I'm not concerned about that. I mean, yeah. Policy is a policy, and if I have to say somebody like, wow, the, you know, with the way overcapacity of your past meeting caused us to reconsider our <laughs> policy, I mean, I'm happy to tell them that, but that's yeah. essentially where the position they put us in yeah. by not policing their own capacity mm -hmm. and counting yeah, heads and turning true. people away. They said they had a waiting list, and then they promptly ignored the waiting list and just let everybody in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, that's not a hard conversation to have. Anyway, so if everybody has a chance to look at the meeting room policy and if things strike you as items that you want to be sure are talked about, thought about, incorporated, or changed, please let Susan know. Or should we bring that to our next meeting? Like, Well, no, let's, if you have ideas, send them to Susan now. We just, we don't want to because, put all, as many thoughts in the pot okay. as, as possible. So because the next meeting is them. before our meeting. Okay. Yeah, just we'll, send them directly, and then it's not a discussion. Yeah. It's just right. okay. Right. And then yeah. just put together a recommendation. We'll look it over, discuss it. But hopefully, most of the work is done, and you know, it doesn't take up hours of yeah. this group's time. Well, is that something that requires like us to meet prior to that? Uh, that's not going to happen. No. I mean, right now, what I mean, mean, we'll just ask them. We will suggest to them that they must abide by. The policy. Oh, you're talking about the, the group that meets the, the most. Yeah, the folks who are yeah. here. Yeah, when I talk to the next, I'm just going to let them know that they were not in that they were in violation of the policy, and that if it happened again, they would jeopardize their ability to use the space in the future. That they need to stick by the policy. The capacity is 100. I can explain it again, and you know, just let them know that's where it stands. Yeah. Okay. Let's to them. There's hotels here you can rent right, exactly. banquet facilities. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I will say, I will say, um, interestingly, town businesses. we did get a lot of phone calls from people um, who were, if not incensed, then, you know, really curious about why we had not, why we don't list events like this on the library's website. Because we had people calling and saying, I'm looking for information about this event that's happening on Saturday. Um, and as, as one of you said, I think you said that you, you know, sometimes you assume that it's somehow affiliated with the library and we yeah. just have, I've been telling the staff, like, just be like, we know nothing about the event. Yeah. It's not anything to do with the library. It's, it's not affiliated to the library. It's job to advertise yes. it, not right. the library. Right. So yeah. people calling us and saying, well, what's the website? What's this? And we're like, we don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it has nothing to do with us mm -hmm. other than that they're using the space. I mean, um, eventually I can see a calendar that blocks, just blocks out time because it is reserved for a private function. Right, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be a promotional but it's, tool. No, okay. and it's not necessarily going to say, identify who is using it. It's mm -hmm. simply... Reserved, it's been reserved. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, you know, it's different if it is one of our children's programs. It's different mm -hmm. if it is a friend's program. Mm -hmm. But... You know, and I don't, I don't know if there should be exceptions to that. That's perhaps something that needs to be discussed more. 
um, you know, are there other events other relative to the town? Yeah. Like that the those meetings, rec or something. right? But those meet well. The well, parking rec meeting wouldn't be. But I mean, essentially, if we collaborate with another group, it's essentially like a co-promotion. So yeah. if we agree to, you know, because we do get a lot of that. We get a lot of things that come through the door that people are like, "Well, will you help us to, you know, put something on?" Mm -hmm. um, and and we'll do that. And then at that point, it becomes like it does become a library, mm -hmm. you know, promotion. Right. But as far as you know, various committee meetings, that all gets posted through the. Through the clerk's op yeah. the clerk's office, so that's taken care of. We don't need to be dealing with any of their meetings. That's they do that legally. You know, mm -hmm. they have to follow the procedure. Um, and anything else is just really none of our business because I just I don't have time to. No, we don't have time to promote the things that we are doing. Much less, you know, Timmy's birthday party. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else? Then we're all done. Motion to adjourn. So move, second, undermarket, set, go. 807.